Naam, kama unavyoona ni kwamba Rais Uhuru Kenyatta tayari keshaingia tayari kuhutubia wananchi, lakini kama kumbuka nilivyokuambia hapo awali ni kwamba Kinara wa Nasara ila Odinga ataweza kuzungumza wa kwanza, halafu akifuatiwa naye Rais Uhuru Kenyatta ni kikao cha kipekee mtazamaji tuweze kusikiza. Ladies and gentlemen of the press and fellow Kenyans in the life of any nation a time comes when the people and their leaders must audit the progress made towards the attainment of the goals and prayers laid out at the founding of the nation Abraham Lincoln said and I quote if we could first know where we are and whether we are tending, we could then better judge what to do and how to do it. When such time comes, leave the leaders entrusted to secure these goals, in our case justice, unity, peace, liberty and prosperity for all have a duty to reflect on their performance in the search for these hallowed goals. Such a time has come for Kenya. Fifty-four years into independence, we are challenged to audit our progress towards the ideal for which our fathers fought to establish a free and independent country, and for which many of our compatriots died. We, the leaders, are equally summoned to reflect on our performance towards the achievement of our nation's aspirations. This audit and introspection has been a long time coming. Throughout our independent history, we have had doubts on how we have conducted our affairs in the face of growing divide along ethnic, religious, and political lines. Regrettably, we have responded to our challenges by mostly running away from them. We have moved from year to year, election to election, never pausing to deal with the challenges that our diversity was always going to pose to our efforts to create a prosperous and a united nation. Consequently, the ties that bind us are today under the severest of stress. Our diversity appears destined to be a curse to ourselves today and to our children tomorrow. In the past, we have given a lot of attention to institutional reforms in the hope that this could lift us to the next level of nationhood and make us a blessed land. Seven and a half years ago, we gave to ourselves a new constitution. We put our faith in it as the instrument to revolutionize our nation. In this way and many other ways, we created some of the best hardware any country has ever possessed to engineer their affairs. We must be courageous enough to admit that it has not worked. It has failed because we are yet to upgrade our software. We have been pouring new wine into old wine skins. The gospel tells us that new wine needs new wine skins. The time has come for us to confront and resolve our differences. These differences are becoming too entrenched. No two Kenyans agree on the origins of the differences and what they portend. Millions of our children continue to be born and married into these differences. People are dying out of these differences. Many of these differences are already well entrenched in the third generation of Kenyans that are currently leaking the fourth generation in primary and secondary schools. Yet in many instances, Kenyans cannot remember why and where they disagreed 
in the first place. As we fight ostensibly to save ourselves from each other, the reality is we need to save our children from ourselves. My brother and myself have therefore come together today to say this dissent stops here. We refuse to allow our diversity to kill our nation. We refuse to be the leaders under whose watch Kenyans lead into a failed nation. This is a call to self-reflection. We have to look into ourselves and challenge our readiness to make the changes that will allow our institutional reforms to work. So long as we remain divided, acrimonious, selfish, and corrupt, no amount of institutional reform will better our lives. The reform process will become an exercise in diverting attention from our own failings and taking refuge in the blame game. Good afternoon, everybody. First and foremost, I have taken great pleasure this morning in welcoming my brother, Raila, to Harambe House, where, as he has clearly indicated, we have had the opportunity for extensive discussions on matters Kenya. And we have come to a common understanding, an understanding that this country of Kenya is greater than any one individual. And that for this country to come together, leaders must come together. Leaders must be able to discuss their differences. Leaders must be able to discuss what ails our country what is the reason and the cause for the ethnic divisions and frictions that we see across the country that sometimes lead to even intercommunal conflicts as we have seen in various parts of our country we have seen up in Wajir as we have seen in the borders of West Pokot and Marakwet and many other places so we have a responsibility as leaders to be able to come together to discuss these issues and to find solutions, solutions that will bind our people together, that will unify our country, and that will give us a life cycle 
that is beyond the five years that we have established for ourselves. Elections come and go, but Kenya remains. So as we plan ourselves for the future, our future cannot be dictated by the forthcoming election. Our future must be dictated by the prosperity, stability of our nation and the well-being of our people. Democracy is not, as has often been said, an end in itself. It is just a process by which the will of the people is heard, but the national good, the national interest, must always prevail over those elections. And this is what me and my brother have agreed, that starting today, we will begin a process of bringing our people together, that we will begin a process of discussing what ails us and what creates division amongst us. And we look forward to the support of every single leader. We look forward to the support of every single Kenyan so that we can build together a united, harmonious, stable nation where no individual feels left out or left behind. So to me, this marks a new beginning for our country, a beginning in which we hope that we shall march together as Kenyans and that we can differ in terms of political alignment but always remain steadfast and united in matters Kenya. So with those few and brief remarks, a more detailed statement will be given to all of you to be able to read and to understand that formulates this new beginning that we seek to start and we thank you for finding time to join us and as my brother has said we look forward to you to be our partners to create this new Kenya thank you and God bless you